Hi guys, it's me again, Barnaby Slater for Spurred On, and this is a new segment we've got, which is all about the young guns at our fantastic training academy. The guys who've come up through the ranks, got into Poch's first team last year, and the guys who are going to be following them in the years coming forward. So we've got an expert on hand, on Skype, to talk to us about those coming through the academy. So hello, Craig Vi. How are you doing, Craig? Hello Barnaby Slater, I'm doing very well, thank you mate, how are you? Yeah, really good, really excited to see which of the youth can come through again. I really feel confident that Poch, with Paul Mitchell, is making the most of that academy that Daniel Levy put his heart and soul into. So let's make a start through it, let's talk about the Under-20 World Cup during the summer. We had a couple of players playing in that, didn't we? Let's make a start with uh, Milos Velkovic of Serbia, a World Cup winner Milos no less. Milos Velkovic, yeah, Milos Velkovic. I mean, Barnaby, we've got a World Cup winner in our ranks. No. How long has it been since we can say that? 1966, hey. Jimmy Greaves, you know, not a single right, YouTube believe. watcher will remember that, that's for sure. Exactly, exactly. I mean, look, you know, okay, look, we, we say World Cup winner, it's the under-20s World Cup, but, you know, who's splitting hairs here, right? <laughs> I mean... This kid, he played every single minute of every game for Serbia at under 20s in the, uh, New Zealand recently. He was an absolute rock for them, played mainly in central defence for them, although he is a player that likes to play more in that kind of holding midfield role. Oh. Dare I say it, he's quite a bit like Nemanja Matic okay. uh, of Chelsea. Similar, um, similar stature, similar build? Similar stature, similar build. You know, um, he, he play, he's got the kind of, the, the sort of, graceful, glides across the pitch kind of style. You know, he's good on the ball, comfortable on the ball, but he's absolutely solid in the tackle as well. Yeah, so, it, it, you know, it's great to see. And, um, you know, who knows? There might be a partnership there that we can develop alongside Nabil, alongside Ben Taleb. Uh, I don't want to push Mason out, but um, uh, that could be something really promising for the future. Well, it's great to have options. So you think potentially he's someone who, even in the next 12 months or so, could start knocking on the door? You, he uh, he to... played a couple of seasons ago under Sherwood towards the back end of the he season, did. didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he did. He came on and um, I, I think we thought that we, he might show a bit more promise following on from the end of that season under Sherwood, uh, the season before last where he came on uh, towards the end of a couple of games and, and did look very good when he came on, I thought, quite composed. Uh, he actually went on to have loans at uh, Middlesbrough firstly last season under Ata uh, Karanka. Yeah. Struggled to get into the first team there. I mean, they, they were a team challenging for the title, of course, for automatic promotion. Yeah. And then he was quite unfortunate. He then went on to Charlton for the second half of the season and sustained quite a bad in injury. So he only managed eight games in total during those two loan spells. Yeah. But this season, I think it's different. You know, he's got the World Cup win on his back. Feeling confident. I've just seen pictures of him today, back training at the club, yeah. uh, doing the the, uh, the all of the the hard stuff during pre-season. Sure. And I, I do hope. I've got hopes that he might be in and around the first team this season. You might see him going out on loan again, but I would expect it to be to a, a, a top or at least a decent Championship side at worst. Okay, cool. Uh, so there was a lot of buzz about him during the World Cup, uh, the Under Twenty World Cup on Twitter. Another one who was out there who I saw a lot of buzz about, particularly from our American fans, was Cameron Carter Vickers. Now, he's also a bit of a beast, isn't he? A centre-back, is that right? He is. Yeah, he is. And he's, he, he is huge. The lad is huge. I mean, he's only 17. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, he, he's, he's massive. His stature is massive. But then his dad was a professional NBA basketball player. Is that right? In the, in the 80s, the mid-80s. I think he broke in in, like, 1983. Okay. Uh, he, he is uh, half American, half English. Unfortunately, uh, fans will be disappointed to learn that he was playing for the USA out in the under-20s. Sure. And, we expect him now to go on and progress into their, their national side. Jürgen Klinsmann is a massive, massive fan. Legend. Yeah, exactly. Spurs legend. There is a lot of talk. There is a lot of talk about this player from, from people outside of the club as well. I mean, inside the club, they're going as far as saying that he is our most exciting and best central defensive academy product since Ledley King. I was Certainly. hoping that's what you were going to say, Gray. There you go, I've said it. We Not need the next well. Ledley. Too much pressure on the boy's shoulders. Yeah. But again, you know, he, the, the, the boy's stature, his composure and maturity. Everyone talks about his maturity. Uh, for such a young kid, only 17, it really belies his age. And uh, I think we're going to see some big things from this kid in the future. Okay, so maybe you think uh, some runouts in the Europa League or in the in the League Cup or, or yeah. alone, you think, maybe? I, no, I think so. I think so. Yeah, Europa League. I, uh, from what I'm hearing, that's what the club are, are sort of earmarking for him this season. Again, there might be a loan deal. I'm not sure if he'll go out on loan to begin with. I think we'd rather retain his services that we can use him in the early rounds of the Europa, perhaps uh, when we get into the league stages. 
Uh, and, and then you might see him going out on loan again towards the end of the season. But okay. again, I think he's another one who's going to be pushing for a first team place. Fantastic. Well, we've been looking for the next Ledley since Ledley retired. So uh, let's go. Let's, you mentioned loans there. Let's talk about our loanies who are out on loan at the end of last year. Obviously, we got Dele Ali. We only bought him in January, but we sent him back on loan to the MK Dons. And uh, talk a bit about him and then Alex Pritchard and maybe a little bit about his injury, how that's progressing. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, look, Deli Ali, first of all. Now, this is a player's name who's on every, every Spurs fan, fan's lips at the moment. I think a lot of Spurs fans would admit they probably didn't know too much about him before all of the hype, before all of the rumours started, and then the eventual transfer occurred back in January. Of course, we then loaned him back to MK Dons for the rest of the season. He actually uh, got a knock. He got a, um, a knee injury, mm -hmm. which prevented him from playing uh, in... Uh, a couple of games, about four or five games, I think, when we loaned him straight back. But it's unbelievable. He ended up playing 39 games in total for them last season. He scored 16 goals yeah. and made, I think it was, nine assists. Yeah. From, so from central about, midfield, right? Yeah, central midfield. I mean, he's a, again, he's another big lad. He's, I think he's 6'2", 6 6'3". 6 uh, he's very imposing, very strong. Now, he is a box-to-box -box midfielder. And we you hear that term a lot nowadays. Mm. I mean, they, they said that about Paulinho. Hmm. Let's not go there. But th this boy is the real deal. He's, he's the real thing. You know, he's, he's being compared to Steven Gerrard, to Yaya Torre. Again, I shouldn't really bring up these names, but he's being compared to Patrick Vieira. Yeah. Excuse me while I just throw up yeah. a bit, Barnaby. Do a bit of that. <laughs> no problem. But in all seriousness... He, this boy has got the talent, he's got the promise, and he's been doing it. Let's not forget, you know, he's been playing league football, professional league football. Okay, just League One. But he's been ripping up that league. He he's has. too good for it. And he said himself, he doesn't want to go out on loan. He wants to be in and around the first team, and he wants to be challenging for a, pay, a yeah. place. Seems, and, seems like he's got that confidence, doesn't he? It seems like he's got the confidence to say, I can, uh, you know, I, I can get in the team I'm, here. Yeah, I'm here, and I think I'm good enough. And I... Uh, you know, I really think he's good enough as well. Let me just tell you, Eric Dyer in recent days has said about him, he said that Nabil Bentaleb, of course, who is our resident club beast, yeah. the athletic beast and animal that he is, apparently Deli Ali has been pushing him all the way in the running and endurance tests yeah. that they've been doing in pre-season. So I'm really excited yeah, about this. Yeah, I kid. am too. I'm hopeful. I, I'd really like... I think it's exactly what we need, uh, you know, uh, people who are, like you said about some of the earlier players, strong in the tackle, but also can get forward and come back. Bentaleb is exactly that player and versatile. Exactly. And uh, if we yeah. can get a few more of those around him, then, you know, yeah, it's all can look good. For places. It's competition for places. I think inevitably there's been quite a lot of comparisons to John Bostock and the John Bostock sure. situation. The, the, the comparisons end for me in the fact that he's tall, he's rangy, and he's comfortable on the ball. Yeah. That's where it ends. The difference is this kid's been doing it. He is the real deal. He's already been playing at League One level consistently now for over two years. He's banging in the goals and he's far too he good seems to, He seems to have a better attitude, I think. That's what I would, I would spot so, from the difference. Yeah, John well, Bostock yeah. seemed to me to be a little bit like he believed, he believed the hype. Flashy. You know? The kid was flashy. The kid was flashy. Yeah. You don't get that with Deli Ali. This kid gets his head down and he works hard. Okay, great. And then uh, Alex Pritchard, who was on loan at Brentford, came back. He was looking brilliant in the, uh, for the under-21s, wasn't he? And then yeah. he, he, got a, he got a little bit of ankle knack. What's, what's happening with that injury there? He did, he did. Apparently, it's, uh, it's clearing up quite nicely. I mean, I think they're expecting him to be fit by the start of the season. He obviously won't have had as much of the sort of running endurance test, as much of the kind of pre-season match fitness that a lot of the other players have by that time. Sure. But he's another one that isn't expecting to go out on loan. He's had assurances from Posh that he will be in and around the first team, and that's exactly where I expect him to be. I mean, this is another player. We've got to be so excited about this, these youth team players that we've got at the moment. This kid, again, is absolutely mustard. Yeah. I mean, he's got two excellent feet. He's another attacking player. He plays sometimes as a number 10, but really he can play in either position on a, on a sort of front three, sure. on either flank, sure. or, or maybe kind of in behind a, a striker in a, in a sort of 4-2-3-1 sure. formation. Again, he scored 12 goals last season, chipped in with seven assists. He was named Players' Player of the Year and also made it into the championship team of the season. You can't do much better than that at can't. that level for a player of his age. And and, uh, we're really going to benefit from having him around. Yeah, and what I'd say is if there's anyone who a young player could learn off uh, in those positions, it's Christian Eriksen. So Absolutely. maybe they're looking towards, unfortunately for me to say it, but you know, I think Eriksen has a plan and that might involve a big move in the next year or two. 
and then maybe yeah. they'll bring Pritchard up. Okay, um, running out of time a bit, but let's just mention a couple of two, a couple of players quickly. Uh, Harry Winks has signed a new deal. We did we did kind of touch across yeah. it uh, on Spurred on before, and then uh, also let's talk a bit about Josh Anoma because he um, he's played a bit of first team for us, uh, football for us. And uh, I've read that uh, Liverpool, City, and Chelsea are, are sniffing around because he's a young English talent, and they yeah. need to up their quota. That's true, and it's true, and the, the, those rumours are true. They, they, they've been making inquiries to the club, as far as I understand it, but the club, quite rightly, have been quashing them straight away. They're, they're not listening to it at all. They're, they're, they're not going to pay any heedance to these uh, bigger clubs, so-called bigger clubs, coming in and, and trying to, you know, flash the cash and what have you. I mean, again, this, he, he's a wonder kid, Anoma. You know, don't, don't think that... Um, He's overhyped, or, okay. or you know, any of these rumours about him being the bigger clubs being interested in him is just talk. This kid again is the, is the real deal. He's a bit of a wizard with the football. He's got all the skills. He's got all of the techers. Yeah. Um, he came on, I think it was uh, in the FA Cup for us against Burnley in a in a mid round replay last season. Yeah. Held his own very very well, and and again he played quite a few games in the first team set up on our post season tour of Malaysia. That's right. Again, looked quite good then. So he's a talent. And that you know we're going to get these big teams sniffing around, and particularly because they want to fill their quotas of of English players. But I don't think this boy's going anywhere. In, in fact, one rumor that might be true mm. is that Tim Sherwood has been making inquiries about taking him out on loan to Aston Villa next season. Yeah, that's one that I, I could see happening actually, and I think you might start to hear a little bit more about that in the coming days. I think it would be quite a good fit for him, and it would be a good move for the player and the club because he'd gain valuable first team senior experience, but also Premier League experience as well, and um, yeah. that can only benefit us. Definitely, and, and that, that worked with Carl Walker and Danny Rose uh, Walker at uh, Villa and. Danny Rose at Sunderland, obviously, a few years That's ago. It. OK, and then just very quickly, Harry Winks signed a new deal. You've got big hopes yes. for, uh, for him as well, yeah, haven't you? Yeah, Harry Winks, again, you know, he's a, we, we seem to have a wealth of these excellent technical midfielders yeah. uh, in the academy and the youth ranks at the moment. He's another one, very technically gifted, very, very comfortable on the ball. He's, he's, he's a tall lad, again, but excellent, excellent feet. He's signed uh, a contract until 2018 with the option of a further year. Uh, he's looking very, very good for the future. He, he's actually already come on. I think it was in a Europa League match against Partizan Belgrade mm -hmm. last year. And I'm expecting him to, to get in and around the team. And lastly, before uh, you let me go, the, the other player I want to talk about very quickly is Grant Ward. Sure. He's just signed on loan for Rotherham United for the Millers. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he was a player, really, that, that's surprising a few people. He seems to have made a huge leap in the last sort of six months, possibly a year. He's, he's really come on leaps and bounds. He's full of energy full of work rate, and, and don't get me wrong here, he's got an absolute beast of a shot on him. Right. Scored two very good goals for them in pre-season already, so he's one to have a look at on loan watch. Okay, well I'll be watching that uh, after match of the day uh, in my championship uh, Saturday night schedule. Uh, Craig, thank you so much for being with us. Guys, back at home, uh, let us know in the comments section what you think of uh, the Young Guns coming through. Let us know if you've got any other names on the top of your head who you think we should be talking about in our next Youth Watch special. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and follow us on Twitter at Spurred on TV and we'll be seeing you next time. Thanks a lot. Welcome to Conspiracy Theories, episode one, Hugo Lloris. On the 